Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week, where are these clowns? Devin tries to win a challenge in the DC-4, but has to act fast when he loses an engine. We're losing it. James gets on his soapbox. Right on, Saigon. Go. For the pride of Buffalo. My wheel broke. And Joe heads to England. I'll take them all. I'll need them all. To raid an airline. It's all been in a box. Back to Canada. And make some history. It's delivery day on the ramp in Yellowknife. Oh yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, that's him. Look how fucking big that is. This is a historic Buffalo moment. We got a DC-6 inbound from Alaska. It should be touching down any second here. Buffalo's bought a plane that could be a major game changer for the airline. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, she's here. It's DC-6. Buying an aircraft, especially a different type of aircraft, is always a huge gamble. The 6 is a longer, more powerful, pressurized version of the DC-4. It's a radial engine aircraft, 1950s vintage. It'll fit in perfectly here. It's a beast and a half, isn't it, eh? It's like a big DC-4, basically, right? Well, I knew about it. The last quite a few years have been in Alaska. It's always been in my mind that I'd probably get it if it come available. This particular DC-6 has a very rare and special feature. I've always heard rumors of the Swingtail 6, sort of like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot, of this thing existing out there in aviation world. Now we're opening. <laughs> well, dude. It's crazy, yeah. Wait, wind uh, limitation though, eh? When you pull this? I think it's 37 knots. Not bad. No, no. Well, it goes right 90 degrees, does it? Oh, yeah. It's still going. Yeah. The swing tail makes this DC-6 much faster and easier to load than any other plane in the fleet. Our side-loading aircraft are very limited for actually what we can put in the airplane. All right, that's it. Only two sixes were ever converted to swing tails, and this is the last one still flying. By having swing tail six, we can use the entire fuselage as the door. I wish it was here maybe 10 years ago. We could have used it every day. Joe's in a big push to update his fleet, even if it's only from the 40s to the 50s. It's amazing what he pulls out of the woodwork. It's like Jurassic Park, I guess found another species to resurrect. And Joe's about to make another major acquisition, a plane he hopes will carry Buffalo right into the future. The next morning, a crew of Buffalo's youngest pilots is on the way to stock up for a unique challenge. This shit happens in Yellowknife, eh? Will Dyer has just arrived in town after toughing out a long winter on the Hay River ramp. That's some blow up poles. He and co-pilots David and Graham are out to humble Devin Brooks, a captain who's been merciless on them in the cockpit. Let's face it, it's yeah. Devin, so he's gonna get the blue one so he can't see it. Yeah, get it. <laughs> Fire season starts in two days, so they're setting up a tough round of target practice to put Devin's water bombing skills to the test. I like the idea we get him a pool, and then he's got to fill, fill the, the pool. pool. They got to have some better blow up toys here. You can put a boat. Wait. We should get more than one thing, because if he hits the first one and 
pops or something. Pops. It'd be boring. It comes with a slide. Slide? Holy. We'd have to play with it before we took it out there to test it, eh? <laughs> I like the idea, a boat or a pool and then something in it. Oh. Yeah, I know. It'd be hilarious if you bought a bunch of balls and put it in the pool and... Oh, yeah. Plus, they got butterflies on them. You think this is enough? <laughs> Back on the ramp, Devin is ready for action. Today's job, test out the tanks on Tanker 15. Tanker 15 is Buffalo's DC-4 water bomber, and Devin will be flying it for the very first time. I'm gonna go out and uh, hopefully sink some dinghies. How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna drop a bunch of water on them with this guy. Graham helped pick out the targets. Now he's going to help Devin hit them. Uh, start creeping. It's Devin's first time in a four in a little while. Fighting fire demands precision and split second timing. But Devin's never been short on confidence. Oh yeah, fire season is nothing. You just go through your practices. You just get used to the winds, uh, the particular airplane. We're going boating. Down at the lake, the crew of young co-pilots is hoping to blow Devin's bravado right out of the water. Don't this up, man. <laughs> if they can get their boat into the water. I'm not sure how much practice he's had reversing that trailer. <laughs> Never the left. No, other way. Dude, is he gonna? Hey, slow down. Hey, there you go. Dude, did you actually buy boating shoes? Oh, I had these before. <laughs> Matt, David, and Chris are all hoping for some payback against Devin today. Left 3002, steering's good, decks and checks, check flaps. He has that confidence, he's very confident. Oh, steering's good, brakes good, instruments in the turn here. Yeah. You know, I thought it would be fun to kind of put his, his confidence to a test. Give him a call there so we don't have to stop. Tower, tanker 15, it's ready to go. I want to see how he does on his first one to, before I start, you know, wagering anything, but. <laughs> Jesus. Last one Wind 320 wet 9, clear for takeoff, runway 34. Clear for takeoff, 34 for Tiger 50. Okay, it's set it's max power, we're in the green. Max power. <laughs> max power set. They're locked. You hit them up. Airspeed's live. Sure. My pole. Your pole. Right there, isn't it? Over there somewhere. No real answer, answer yet. The guys are pumped about testing Devin with these targets. <laughs> Yeah, uh, tank of 15, this is flight of one, we're in position, over. <laughs> Gotta get angry with it. But if they don't get them blown up quickly... <laughs> you're about a fifth of the way there. They might miss their shot. Devin will have to hit the tiny raft and scramble the toys inside. Ooh. Where are these clowns? Is that him? <laughs> there they are on the left. Got him. Where? Oh, there they are. See him? Devin's sure he knows exactly what he's doing. Flying low, hitting your target speed. Make sure everything was working. That's what we wanted to accomplish in that flight. He's so cocky, he's going to have a little fun first. He's coming for us. He's coming. We'll just do a low and over for now. Sounds good. Oh, to <laughs> see an airplane like that come barreling down at you is really cool. Oh, yeah, I'm going to blow the power train out of the fucking town. Is this going to be a right run here? This is going to be a dump. That's a permit. 
The DC-4's tank is divided into eight compartments, each with its own release door. In total, it holds 9,000 liters, weighing 20,000 pounds. Devin's going to open two doors on each pass, dumping a quarter of his load, 5,000 pounds at a time. Where are these floaty things? I don't know. This Just keep your eyes open for them. Yeah. After the low pass, we came around. There they are, I got them. Yeah. They had everything all set up. There's a 2,500 pounds of door, right? Roughly. 30 flap is set. Set Mito. Here comes Mito. Mito's set. 125 knots, bang on the money. It's time for Devin to prove he can hit the mark. Thirty flap is set. Set Mito. Here comes Mito. Mito's set. Out on Great Slave Lake, Buffalo's co-pilots are using inflatables to try to deflate Devin's ego. 125 knots, bang on the money. Devin isn't even close. He shit the sheets on that one. Oh! oh Dad Jager 15th loader one. Uh, oh, Dad Jager 15th loader one. Uh, a little, little slow on the trigger there. You passed the uh, target before you dropped your load. Oh, oh shit. To... Oh, I, I screwed up on the first one. I missed the dinghies by a mile. Does this thing take a second to do it? Uh, it could be the, like, well, we'll see the, knots, the knots just finicky. Yeah, I hit the goddamn thing and it didn't do it. Do you have to really push this son of a bitch or what? It might have been a sticky trigger, but that won't help Devin save face. Okay. Do her again. So we came around for the second run. There's 30 flat. Going final, you want me to? Yeah, me to. 140 knots. We'll probably have to drop it just a second before. He'll deal with it. That, that area is rounding in. Uh, yeah. We'll bomb that one. Six, 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 six. We'll bump it up the power straight before. Sounds good. Devin's got just three more chances. Hundred forty knots. Yeah, I should slow down. Roger. Thirty flap. Thirty flap is set. Right. There's 130. Check 130. Start adding some jam. Here comes some jam. 130, which is good. Better than 30 knots. Looking good. Roger. That worked that time. That was close. Tell him. Well, maybe he did because he was a lot closer. Yeah, the second one uh, was pretty close. But it's game over. Devin suddenly got a real life problem. Uh -oh. Number two. I don't like that. Half a second. Oh, listen to that. Can you hear that? What? Listen to it. Backfire? Yeah, big time. Backfire. There were probably three or four of them. We're losing it. Literally, we hear pop, pop, pop. Just wait, just wait. The number two engine is shaking. Hard. Shut it down. Shut, Shut two down. down. Roger, throttling her back. The DC-4, anytime something starts to shake or backfire, you always uh, do a precautionary shutdown. Killing two with the mixture. There's not a lot of room for error, so you don't mess around with uh, a bum engine. Oh, no, they're turning back. Yeah, oh yeah. Flying low and hauling thousands of extra pounds, the crew has just lost a quarter of their power. Now there's no margin for error. 
Gathering two. Yep. The engine is off, but at a cost. Any airplane that you have to shut down an engine is less maneuverable. So we still got five, six, seven, eight. With half their tank still full, the extra 10,000 pounds only makes the plane harder to control. Put the rest of this load out over in these lakes here. Just did it. <laughs> Devin and Graham are prepped to land. But this is bad timing on the eve of the fire contract. What a fucking nightmare. We can't have a broken airplane for a contract, so uh, had to get her down and get her checked out, make sure everything was good. Okay, get her down. Here it comes. Gear is down three green. Super. Got you 110 uh, on the airspeed. Thank Full you. flap is set. 100 knots. 90, 95. Hopefully it's something minor, like a quick jug change or something they can do quick. But jugger mag, yeah. Buffalo's got to hope so. Tomorrow, this plane has to be ready to fight fire. That just sucks. I've been through here quite a bit. So we gotta be careful, don't take something that's just stored in OFB, eh? Buffalo Joe is on a shopping trip, a long way from home. I'm gonna take this generator with me so I can fix it. I'll put it up on the front there. I'm taking those because I gotta change my overhead panel, eh? I want patterns. I wanna take these, I'm short of those at home, eh? Yeah, yeah. What is that? I don't know. Never seen that before, what is it? He's back in Coventry, England, Rating Atlantic Airlines of every last part and piece he can use. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it all, yeah. For Buffalo's fleet of L188 Lockheed Electrics. We have me? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll clean you out. This stays, this goes. But Joe's nabbing more than manuals and generators. They're pretty flimsy without the lids. We'll put the lid on a tape and then it's square, eh? Let's grab the rest. He's taking the very last Electra still flying in the UK. We're going to finish operating it this weekend, and uh, Joe's going to take it over and hopefully operate it as long as he likes. Most of those airplanes have been in the inventory for, for 20 years, and they knew if I took the airplane to Canada, their life would go on. The Electra started life as an airliner in the late 1950s, but as newer jets took over passenger travel, Turboprop Electras started carrying freight. And as the few remaining are converted to tankers, even the freighters are becoming rare. Actually, besides uh, our Electra BAQ flying, Air Atlantic's got the only other in a cargo configuration currently flying. Now, Atlantic's abandoning the turboprops in favor of the modern jet age. But even if the Electra is yesterday's plane here, at Buffalo, it's the plane of the future. Joe likes to operate the older type of aircraft. He doesn't want the expense and the trauma that goes with newer airplanes, I don't think. And he's so used to operating and dealing with obsolete things, he's, he's very good at that. So when they shut her down, Buffalo Air would be the last operator in the world using Electras as cargo. So this leaves that one there, just right. But Joe's not all that happy about the distinction. How long have you been flying Electras for? Oh, oh, we've only been in electric business a couple of years. You love them? No. No. Noisy, screaming sons of bitches. Joe's heart will always be with the roar of the old piston engine planes over those screaming turbines. But fuel is becoming a big problem. Because up north of the Arctic coast, there's no more avgas, it's all jet fuel. We're going to be fueled out of the piston-powered airplanes on, on long-range trips. It's a case of don't go or get an airplane you can buy fuel for. So Joe's picked up the last two to be retired here. He flew one home a few weeks ago. So all this here is weighed and we're going to put it in the belly, eh? The second one is off finishing a contract. And the minute it's back, Joe's taking it to Canada. Here's my boxes. Along with anything else that's not bolted down. I don't want to go that way. But once Joe sees we'll some scrap components from his favorite plane. DC three parts. 
all thoughts of the turboprop Electra are forgotten. Well, that would be scrap. Well, we've been hanging around here for 10 years without being used. Do you have a place you can store them? Not really. Do you have a farm? Take them home. No. It's a shame. See old Rosie here, she's right on the money. I don't know how to get it home, though. I, can't, I keep forgetting I'm not in Calgary. But there are even more parts that Joe wants to bring home, and they're stored far from Coventry. So he's bringing in some backup. Oh, push. Just arriving from the airport. We all coming to see Cap. Yeah, okay. Hello, Speed. Well, you, I made her. Huh? I made her. Did ya? Joe's sending his son on a mission across the UK. Oh, let's have a look. I'll show Mike. And it's going to be a major challenge, at least for Mikey. Back in Yellowknife, engineer James Dojak is making sure Buffalo's ready for fire season. Now we just can continue on. He's replaced a magneto in the DC-4's backfiring engine, just in time to start water bombing. Generator's generating. Now James has another mechanical challenge waiting at home. So it'll be kind of something like this. James' son Damon will be manning Buffalo's entry in the Yellowknife Soapbox Derby. What's this for? To steer. And it's a chance for James to pass on some of his Buffalo engineering expertise. Well, Mikey came up to me one day and with a plan. Mikey always has a plan. Would your boys be interested in doing some racing? And I said, well, what the f why not? Hey, OK, go get the rod. For the soapbox racer, you know, you got your plywood and your kit, which you have to make the basic car out of. Can I do it? Yeah. Can I make sure, sure you got the right drill bit. Go to the hole, right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, now pull it out. There, see? Now you started two holes. Now, now you drill through the wood. All right. Damon's never really participated in, you know, organized things. There you go. All it needs now is a coat of buffalo green. Then the pride of the airline will rest on young Damon's shoulders. So is it like a win or lose thing? Or is it just for fun? Well, it's for fun, but yeah, but like there's gonna be a winner and there's gonna be a loser. It's the whole point of the race. Gonna, and is there gonna be like prizes? The prize is the satisfaction that you did this cart and won the race. Good point. Anything else is a bonus. Yeah, hold that. There's two main strategies for the soapbox. One, you have to get a, a good center of gravity. Okay, we're gonna have to do some wheel adjustment. And the other one is you have to reduce your friction somehow. So you gotta have lube and you gotta have weight. And James has a secret weapon that not even his driver knows about. And then just reposition them. That. But that would be tomorrow. Most of James's work is about defying gravity. Hey, this is pretty fun. Now he'll have to prove he can use gravity to Buffalo's advantage. May the best guy win. In Coventry, England, Joe's shopping expedition is demanding some heavy-duty shopping carts. Well, those are two 40-foot containers. I'll be taking all these parts back to Canada. So those airplanes will end up in these containers and parts is really what's going to happen. The end of an era. It's all going in a box. Back to Canada. Joe will be taking home the last Electra still flying in the UK. And he's grabbing oh, yeah. every spare part on the ramp. What's in there? The, is that the generator? Is that the one you got out of belly? And then you got one in there. So we got three wooden boxes. Yeah. Are they here? But not all the pieces Joe needs are here in Coventry. I got a, a truck. We're either gonna, it's either going to come here or they're gonna, we got to go pick it up. A truck? Go to Cardiff. What kind of truck? A little truck. Here's the guy right here. Come with me. Joe still wants Mikey to collect some water bomber parts in Wales. Are you going? To, are you driving? Yeah. Fantastic. But the boy from Hay River is feeling a little lost. I assumed England's pretty small. Uh, it turns out Cardiff's in Wales, which is a whole other country. But that was just a detail that uh, I learned along the way. I had one day, and we had to get it done. So 
Load up, lock and load, and get going. I want you to drive. Oh, yeah, we'll drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, got, I need at least uh, I need a co-pilot to tell me which way to go around those roundabouts. That <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> but some are this way, <laughs> and then some are that way. Honestly, I was getting kind of nervous that I was going to have to drive on the left side of the road. But luckily, we found a, a Canadian uh, last night that she uh, offered to come be a co-pilot. Uh, oh, in fact, here she is. Mikey's friend Sarah has come to help him navigate. So Sarah's Nigel? Yeah, hi, nice yeah. to meet you. So you're the co-pilot, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I got my GPS as well, so... Yeah. <laughs> I took an opportunity to ask a fellow Canadian uh, who's been living in the UK for a number of years to, you know, give us, me some driving tips. I don't want to go down. I got too much to do here right now. Yeah, but then we got to get going. OK. All right. Yeah, well, see you later. So always backwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I yield here. Look to your right. Nobody's coming. Go. You know what? Driving on the other side of the road was really strange for me. Okay, so. So you're turning right. <laughs> turning right. Yeah. Everything's backwards. You assume to look right, but you should be looking left. And then stick to the left. Yeah. So the left, the yellow is on my left. Yeah. Oh, no, that's backwards. Yeah. Honestly, it's a little freaky. Oh. <laughs> Coast is clear. If Mikey wants to get the parts for Joe and make it back for his historic Electra flight, he'll need all the help that Sarah can give. Are you ready to tackle the magic roundabout? Oh, no. <laughs> Just east of downtown Yellowknife, the Soapbox Derby racers are revving up for a fierce competition, while well, one car gets some last minute finishing touches. Okay, all racers should have registered by now. We've got 36 cars here today, so it's quite exciting. I came into it thinking that everybody's got a fair shot. Many of the teams have built up their soapboxes into sleek works of art. I'm very surprised on how good these cars are. And Buffalo's entry? Not so much. It looked like, like we picked everything out of the garbage. <laughs> we got the headrest thing and the seat from the dump. Damon wasn't so happy about it, but, you know, it's a go-kart. It's not supposed to look fancy. It looked like a soapbox racer should look, in my eyes, anyways. James has a trade secret he's hoping will give them the edge. But will it be enough against the classy competition? It looks like we've got thumbs up. The kids are launched off a ramp. Go! On your mark, go! Thirteen and nine. Thirteen, nine, six. Good luck, On your mark, get set, go. Damon seemed to get the hang of it. Go on a straight line and give her right till the end. Buffalo's first to cross the line, but at a big cost. Oh, boy! My wheel broke. What happened was he got a little excited there at the end, and when he put on the brakes, he pulled back on the steering wheel, and it uh, kind of cracked there. It broke. It just broke. The little racer that could might be finished after only its first race. Like this. I got to under the finish line and it snapped. On the Yellowknife Soapbox Derby course, Buffalo's green machine is down. There's only one thing left to do. Fix it. Oh, look at that. And the Buffalo car has a pit crew like no other in this race. There we go. Right on. Right on, so I go. James knows all about improvising quick fixes under intense pressure. 
we've used a rip tie to keep part of the steering wheel together and some duct tape. It works in the bush, so it'll work here today. And he's good to go for the next race. I'm feeling awesome. I'm feeling so lucky. On your mark, go. Nineteen and twenty-four. Get in line. Go, go, go. Are you guys ready? Yes. On your mark. Go. With James's secret weapon, Buffalo doesn't need to be fancy or modern to get the job done. But right now, their driver has a very urgent race to run. One very important question. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Holy shit. Okay, can I turn here? West of Cardiff, Wales, Mikey McBrien has almost made it to pick up Joe's spare parts. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, I know we've been caught by then. Sorry, we took a wrong turn. Clear, clear. Holy shit, what the f is that? It's an ambulance. <laughs> it's been a tough drive for Mikey, and he's running out of time. But I got kind of backwards lost. We're going back to where we came from. Oh, so where do I need to go here? Um, and I ended up driving through towns and... Yeah, I'd go down, oh, just go straight. Yeah, it ended up taking about three hours. Yeah, there you go, St. Athen. We're here. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Hmm. Interesting to uh, drive on your guys' side of the road. Where I'm from, you drive for like an hour and don't even see anybody. <laughs> but now it's going to be a race to get the parts and drive them back to Coventry in time for the Electra send-off. Well, it's definitely secure here. Yeah, that's the good thing about it. I recognize the oil drums. There's probably $500,000 worth of parts right there. That's the right label, but... Right. Can I see? That's true. Yes, Sometimes. It, it takes one different. <laughs> hmm. I bet you somebody's gone home with the bloody key. Mikey's already way behind schedule, and his time is running out. Get the cutting torch. Number eight. There's just one heat left at the Yellowknife Soapbox Derby. DC4, everybody. And Devin's giving the crowd a show on his way to Hay River for fire duty. <laughs> but the real action is all down on the road. Well, we're in the, in the finals now, and uh, Damon hasn't lost yet, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. The team's still banking on James's special addition to the car. But he's not talking. No secrets yet. You gotta wait till we win. And that's exactly what their driver is shooting for. Good luck, Damon. Thanks, Owen. He was in a mindset that he was gonna win, regardless. Nice. That's a good deal. The competition's got them beat in the appearance category. Lucky 13, Lucas. But this is no beauty contest. Against David. So number 19, Damon. Number 13, Lucas. Lucas, I love your car. You guys ready? Yeah. On your mark. Go. Hit the finish line and he, he knew he won. First place! <laughs> Good job, dude. Seatbelt came off and he's all, whoa, you know. Good job, buddy. Seeing him with a big smile like that and a sense of accomplishment. Victory! 
You couldn't ask for anything better. Number one. Buffalo has taken the prize, thanks to a secret ingredient right out of the hangar. The secret is it's number five, arrow shell grease. <laughs> That's it's the only secret. <laughs> number five, arrow shell grease. Grease designed for airplane wheel bearings has slid Buffalo right into the winner's circle. This is awesome. Look at my trophy. And it's given James and his son a perfect afternoon. I'm trying to pick this lock here. Oh, come on, Betsy. Right now we're locked out, and uh, we got to get in. Oh. Back in Wales, Mikey needs to get Joe's parts out of lockup, and he's turning to some talents picked up in his youth. Uh, this is definitely a hay river skill. Uh, when I was younger, I used to enjoy trying to figure out how to unlock park cars and stuff like that. Yeah, I won't be able to get enough leverage on it. And sometimes you just gotta use some creativity to figure out how to unlock a door. That, I don't. Come on, Betsy. It's so close. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, yes. Woo. Finally. Oh. Um, all right. Let's check it out. That was the easy part. The hard part is now trying to figure out what parts to bring home. Yeah, look, we got the CL215s. Uh, I don't have time too much to look at them right now. We got to see how many parts we can fit in this fancy uh, truck. Oh, f wrong side. Wrong side. <laughs> I can take the, the black and yellow top boxes. We're doing all right. Whoopsies. Perfect. Oh, we're on the wrong side again. <laughs> Mikey's got the spare parts he needs. Buckled up. Buckled up, let's go. I'm surprised how much stuff we fit in there. Yeah, that's really good but it's taken a lot longer than he planned. So we blew the whole day trying to get to Cardiff. We lost a lot of time because the parts were locked up. Oh, fuck, I went from like not busy to super busy, yeah. Rush hour. And Mikey's got just over two hours before the Electra is due to take off. I gotta put my pump in there, you know, that little wheel pump to pump those tanks full. Oh, right, okay, yeah, we'll yeah. grab that. Back in Coventry, Joe's just about ready to fly his latest prize home. I'll take them all. I'll need them all. So how, long, how much longer would they be? Re oh, they refueled already? Yeah, we're done. You know where Mikey is? And if Mikey's not back soon, he's going to miss his flight home. Oh, I f***ed up in there. Uh, I'm actually quite confused. And he's going to miss a huge moment in aviation history. On the ramp in Coventry, the Electra is fueled and ready to fly. The only piece of cargo that's missing is Mikey. You know where Mike is? No idea. A crowd's already gathering to watch the historic departure of the UK's last Electra. The end of an aviation era. Off it goes, new life. And just in time, Mikey makes his deadline. So how you make out? Good, good, a little scuff on the rim. And I showed up a little bit late with the parts. You know, there's a boatload of people out there in safety vests, a bunch of kids and families, and everyone was saying goodbye. Well, I was quite surprised. There's a lot of aviation enthusiasts, and the ramps were full of people like, like an air show was going on. Joe's never had much love for the Electra. But for the people of Atlantic Airlines, today is a farewell to a classic. I've worked for on Electra for, what, 25 years. This is the last one, yes. And uh, I suppose it's, it's a sad day for me. 
I received this one you received 19 it. years ago. It's leaving now, and I'm going to miss her. Hey, I'm going to take a little video. Yeah, I'll have a little tear up. Yeah, I will do. Okay. It's been part of my life for a long time. Some of the guys have uh, basically come up from a, an apprenticeship or as trainees from leaving school and worked their way up on the electors. They've got a lot of experience on them, and that's been their life. Go on, wait. Oh, I'm getting called over the chief. That's all they're waiting for is us, eh? Because they're going to leave without us. So the send-off was uh, way more than expected. Yeah, I got to pitch everybody here. Dig. Took us uh, a quite a while, you know, just to say goodbye to everybody. All right, I picture all you guys now. Thank you for your help. We're not coming out, so shut the door. Oh boy! What's that? Very right, careful. Is everybody? So it was pretty emotional. You know, it was like seeing a family member go. Let's lay that one. Okay, that's good. And drop. This is my first lecture trip. Couldn't have picked a more awesome one. Fire trucks sprayed the old ARC retirement spray for us and we taxied through it, which is really cool. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Yeah. Peace lights out. One, two, the way. Sixty knots. Be too positive. Right? Gear up, please. Last time ever, Air Atlantic's uh, Electra has taken off from Coventry. But the flight crew has one final goodbye to make. So we'll do a low, low approach. Eh? It was up until we turned around to do the flyby that it kind of hit me. It hit me like a sack of hammers. You know, I you know almost got a little bit teared up there, and, and just just the emotional rush of everything and all that stuff, and it was really cool. And gear down, check. And even Joe can see the impact this plane has had here. It was the last Electra leaving the UK, and Electra's had had a 35-year service in the UK. I don't think my father will say it, but I think he believes it too, that it was, you know, an emotional experience. I think it's bittersweet. Bitter that the airplane's leaving, and sweet that it's going to a place that is needed. Our uh, positive rates, traveling. An era's ending in Coventry, but there's a new one just beginning at Buffalo. When the book of the Electra is written, you know, Buffalo Airways might be the last chapter. 